रस्सी दौड़ी रे कमाल कैसा होता है रस्सी दौड़ी रे खेल कैसा आता है चालू करेगा चालू करके दिखाएगा गड़बड़ मत करेगा शुरू हो जा शुरू हो जा As experience invades upon innocence, he is no more a child. It invades the senses in such a way that the child enters the adult world. Vision finds form. It unfurls the lyric of life in vivid colors. In myriad shapes. First, I will finish class 12, then I will do college, then I will become a teacher. I like to be an auntie. I will see the kids in the house, I will be a doctor, and 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 I will be a doctor. I will be a little girl, and I will be a little girl, and I will be a little girl. The sons of the soil, they grow old and die. They don't know the language of protest. For 10 million or more Indian children, every day dawns with a cruel blow. Childhood is the birthright of every child. So many desires of children remain sadly unfulfilled. They are entitled to their childhood joys, but their dream of life is shattered. But were they to end up like this? The basic reasons for the loss of childhood of hundreds of thousands of millions of children in India are, can be classed in three or four clusters. One is class. If you come from a poor family, you have much lesser chance of going to school, of getting adequate health care, of even acquiring an aspiration that you will become as capable as anybody else in terms of your economic power, in terms of your political, uh, let us say, rights, in terms of your civil and social rights. 
but apart from class there is also a question of gender i had an opportunity of backing this up of doing detailed studies looking at nutritional uh, differences particularly i did studies in the villages around shantiniketan uh, where i come from kutli and sahajapur these are villages where i actually weighed every child um uh, below the age of 5 and looked at their birth weight and then uh, surviving nutritional status and it's quite clear that from a situation of being born um pretty much the same and often the girls doing better at the point of birth you find how gradually the situation worsens against them tender hand takes to hard work lungs breathe in carbon monoxide machine devours them Here, labor sells at a low price. Some at the bakery, others in the aluminium factory, or at the tannery. The government has labor laws which do not apply to them. The election promises of social commitment don't touch them. There is much furor in parliament about the fundamental rights enshrined in the constitution. They are denied them too. Wonder is the name of childhood where the dreams find form. Excitement is the name of childhood where imagination can take flight. Celebration is the name of childhood where the song of man is sung in great spirit. Bhagya Yashwami Reddy ne Gobinder Janma Joy Bhakti Nipete Kholo Gode Bina Rajana লাদু জরে বসুদেব কোলে করে নিব নন্দালয়ে গিয়ে ঠাকুরে কে সে বদল করিব বলে আকাশবাণী শুনতে পেয়ে পুতনা চলিল যশোদা দেখে মা তখন আনন্দ হইব যশোদার করে ছিল কৃষ্ণ তা রাক্ষসী করে দিল রাক্ষসী দেখিয়ে তখন হাসিতে ভরিল বিষ মাখা দুধ ছিল কৃষ্ণ দেখা আলো কৃষ্ণ কিন্তু দেখে শুনে হাসিতে লাগিল 
The childhood of Lord Krishna evokes a great interest in the Indian people's mind. But today, the reality of the child in India is quite different. The number of street children in India is above 10 million and is still rising due to poverty and related socio-economic factors. Over 55% of children earn rupees 75 a month and 41% of these put in more work hours than lawfully permissible. 40% are inadequately paid, 65% of whom suffer from acute malnutrition. The main reason uh, as they have identified is deprivation, economic deprivation no control over resources, had, uh, having had no purchasing capacities or economic power to look after their children. So they are just uh, given, uh, thrown out from their family or just had no chance to take care of them. So they either become uh, deserted because of their terrible poverty or because the parents are not in a position to take care of them because due to the economic poverty. That is the main focus. And another is exodus, migration. And there, is a, there is a tendency, particularly in India, because of the border, in, because of West Bengal, there is a uh, stream of migration from Bangladesh. Poor people are coming here. They are taking shelter and having no economic power, no legal status, no social uh, basis. Uh, so they, uh, their children are, are, are just given in that situation. That is another reason for that. Where are they to go? Are they to fall in the trap of criminals? Are they to be abused by society? <laughs> police <laughs> Some devoted social workers and organizations like Prajok have given them the much needed love and care. They get their childhood joys. It <laughs> is
Now you write down 144 and then you divide 144 by the minimum number. If it goes. Education triggers off the development of a child's personality. Stimulates his desire to know the world and create the world of ideas. At the same time, the education imparted to students is formatted in such a way that it disregards the thought process the capabilities and the actual interests of the individual student. It is a mechanical intake of information. I should mention, of course, that education is also very important for economic advancement. Nothing limits, I think, India's economic development as much as the continued level of illiteracy in the country. Half the adult population being illiterate, two-thirds of the women being illiterate, is the biggest drag on the opportunity of India to join up in the world economic um, uh, expansion that we have seen. We want that kind of literacy, that kind of education, which will help the child or the learners to know their own environment better, to know their own position better, so that it can be integrated with their life. It does not harm you know, their harmony or their way of thinking. Lot of these women who uh, get into prostitution come as children from different um, areas and they uh, from different villages and when they are living in the red light areas, they also give birth to children who are once again vulnerable, who live in that area and live in the circumstances where they are also vulnerable. So we started working with these children and we found that many other organizations also gradually started coming in. And uh, uh, the issue of education was being looked into. Uh, the issue of uh, uh, giving them, bringing them to the mainstream was the main idea. So government has no rational policy, either at national level or at a state level to look into their problem, to understand the dimension of the problem and to build up infrastructure that require that they should not be a delinquent juvenile, they should be good citizen and for that purpose they should be given one education up to class 8, two shelter that is in a home and third there should be a caring, there should be a governance on the part of the state by appointing number of male and female person who can counsel them so that they can uh, grow up as the integral part of the society. The available home, existing homes should be uh, properly managed, corruption should be eradicated and more, more new homes, not only in city based but in districts, more homes are to be built up. So this way problem can be solved pending the total change of the system. Within this structure, certain policies, rational, human, in, in conformity with the rights of the child should be formulated by the government, either by the state and by the center. India has now an enormous amount of food grains rotting in the storehouses of the food corporation of India. Now what we should do is to ensure that this food goes to the poor, to all the poor families. If the parents can eat well and know that they can feed their children well, in that case the children can be sent to school. Parents also have developed aspirations. I know that all over West Bengal when I talk to poorer people, practically everywhere they want to send their children to school. But they say we can't afford it. You know, beer makers, they have to roll berries at home because they can't otherwise feed themselves. And that is where it is extremely necessary for the central government to undertake policies so that the poor everywhere can get access to cheap food, cheap medicines, cheap clothing. Now, I have talked about food. Under the crazy policy that the government is pursuing, 
the government will export food abroad, but they will not distribute the food to the poor. And that is a policy that has to be changed. And that is a policy that can be only changed fully if the whole economic policy stance of the government is changed. If they really want to abolish poverty, they will have to give land to the poor in places like Uttar Pradesh and Bihar and Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan, they will have to make sure that the landlords do not control land, water, access to schools, access to ferry, guards, they control everything. They control even access to bank loans, they control all the public money. So, if you can cannot change that situation, how are the poor going to get the basic minimum standard of living which will enable them to stand up as free human beings and treat their children as the next generation as people who will become free human beings. We two teachers in future. I come from Ladakh. Mm, my name is Jimmy Wangel. Mm, uh, I came here six uh, six years ago. In I think my life is in this monastery. I feel he is very good and very good and uh, I like Darjeeling. My friend is living in Ladakh. Mm. 